Hello everyone and welcome to Monkeyfish channel. In today's video let's talk about Jeet Kune Do. This is a really controversial topic because many people believe that Jeet Kune Do is equal to Bruce Lee and this is his martial art so have to be the greatest. But the same people forgetting about small tiny detail that they are not Bruce Lee, they are not fat like him, they are not strong like him and they are not him. For this video I asked Ed from Metroidvania Martial Arts for help because he know more and he is much deeper in this topic than me and probably many of you are going to say that it's not the best choice of mine but in my opinion it's a best choice because he's a YouTuber, he's a Jeet Kune Do instructor and he trains different martial arts so he's more open-minded and he's not blind like many many instructors. Okay Ed, so first question, what Jeet Kune Do really is? Because I know it's many camps some of the people think that it's a philosophy, some that it's a martial art and others that this is both. In my personal opinion it's a philosophy because it's a form without form and you have to follow three points. Simplicity, directness and freedom. Hi Damien, I appreciate your patience with me on getting back to you with these videos. So the first question that you asked, is Jeet Kune Do a style or a philosophy? And to be honest with you it's both. Um, it's kind of like an open and closed system. So one of my friends uh, kind of talked to me about it. He's uh, from the Ted Wong side and he talked about like that it was a set part of things but it also is a philosophy insofar as like efficiency. So you can apply the Mao Zedong uh, quote that Bruce Lee wrote uh, in a book that he gave uh, uh, Dan and Asanto, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless and add is specifically what is your own. The, um, the problem with that is it kind of muddies the water a bit in terms of what um, you know what you can and cannot add and still call it Jeet Kune Do. In my personal opinion, it's a philosophy. You can apply this philosophy in most of the styles. So for example, if I am a Muay Thai fighter, I am not. But if I am a Muay Thai fighter, for the sport, I would just kick the leg, boom. But if I have to use my Muay Thai skills to defend myself, I would go for the knee, boom. Or for the sport, I would go for the teeth. But for the self defense, I would go for the groin. The same things, different levels, different targets, different uh, mindset. This is sport or self defense. I think if I just follow these three steps, then I can apply Jeet Kune Do in my style. Before we go any further, I would like to tell you that I am not a hater. I really like the idea of Jeet Kune Do, and I am Bruce Lee fan and I love what he did for martial art and cinematic community but I don't really like what people do with Jeet Kune Do so if you have to say that Jeet Kune Do is a martial art style then in my opinion it is a very disrespectful for Bruce Lee because he didn't believe in styles I do not believe in styles anymore and he was thinking that styles separating people from each other styles tends to uh, 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 not only separate men, you know, because they have their own doctrines and then the doctrine became the gospel truth, you know, that you cannot change, you know. I don't necessarily think that calling Jeet Kune Do a fighting style is disrespectful to Bruce, but it does kind of go in the vein of what he was trying to do. Move beyond styles. If I talk about style, you have to go a bit deeper. What style really is? Because for me, style is that stance, tactic and special moves and for example if you go for open grappling tournament then when you see how people fight you can kind of know what they train before because if somebody is really low it might be a wrestler somebody is have a straight posture go like this it might be a judoka if somebody is somewhere between it might be a BJJ practitioner the same with the striking art when somebody is like this or somebody is like this you kind of know what to expect, you know what they could train before but just by looking what they do because this is already style, this is how you recognize the style and Jeet Kune Do in most of the schools have that so this is already a style and he didn't want to call his style a style so this is why I see that this, in my opinion is a little bit disrespectful for him what is your opinion about this? I think it would be better if people that trained in Jeet Kune Do when they practice whatever you know that thing is, is maybe call it something else. Probably this fight between philosophy and style will never end 
so probably it's easier to call this it a bit different for example fighting metal in my opinion in Jeet Kune Do community is a lot of hypocrites because Bruce Lee didn't want to create the style and he don't like the idea of the styles because he believes that this separating people from each other and what Jeet Kune Do community did they create two different Jeet Kune Do styles it looks like they make two different caps on one field and the funny part is that they don't agree with each other and sometimes they even hate each other and still believes that they both follow in the way of thinking of Bruce Lee and train like him this looks a little bit weird to me but what do you think about this? You know, Bruce Lee is funny and his style is also funny because Bruce Lee was full of contradictions. He would say one thing and then he would say another thing the next time. So he was constantly contradicting himself. He couldn't quite decide where he wanted his philosophy and, and, and martial arts to go personally. So of course, upon his death with no clear direction, things would crystallize and move in directions depending on who was taught what. So then we get the multiple factions of original Jeet Kune Do and Jeet Kune Do concepts and, you know, Chinatown Jeet Kune Do and uh, Jun Fung Gung Fu Institute. We have all these different sections because there was no clear air. I ask you for help in this video because I know that you train BAJ and you have uh, some grappling experience. But for what I know and for what I can see, a lot of, of Jeet Kune Do schools looking away and they are blind and they don't want to train any grappling because they say that on the street you should never go to the ground and it's kind of true but you should know at least a little bit grappling so you know how to not go to the ground and what to do if you are already there so i think you should have at least a little bit of grappling experience what is your opinion about this because from what i know bruce lee had some judo and jiu-jitsu experience and he even put some grappling techniques in his movies and those techniques are also in his books so he already saw it that grappling is really important so for me it's a little bit weird that Jeet Kune Do practitioners who look to these books and they look on them like this is a holy book they're looking away from the grappling but if they skip the grappling part they're going to miss something and I don't understand that so Jeet Kune Do doesn't really have any grappling because of whatever reason, right? Bruce Lee did incorporate some of it in his self-defense books, uh, you know, the, and the, uh, the the Bruce Lee fighting method books. Uh, so it does have some grappling, but it's pretty rudimentary. It's more just for the self-defense. A lot of the Jeet Kune Do concepts guys that I, you know, hang out with have all trained in some types of gra uh, some type of grappling. So like uh, Bruce Lee's uh, student Dan Inosanto is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And a lot of his students are, you know, like Eric Paulson is a black belt in Jiu Jitsu. And I'm under Eric Paulson and, and Carlos Machado uh, kind of both together. And, and you know, it, it just depends on the individual. If they don't put a lot of focus on the grappling, then yeah, they're not gonna do it. But if they know that it's an important aspect of it, then they'll might train it or at least study it. It's the same with weapons. Uh, some of them look at Kali as a means of weapons defense, others look at firearms. There's a lot of different ways of looking at it. It's the exact same as grappling. Some Jeet Kune Do schools will focus on it as a holistic point, but they won't call that Jeet Kune Do. They'll call that weapons training or weapons self-defense or firearms training. It is a different thing. Some of you know that I was a Wichu practitioner many years ago, and I also tried a Jeet Kune Do schools i think was two or three times i don't remember it was many years ago but i have tried and i have a really bad experience with that because to me it was just a wind tune but without engine kinjoma and without forms and the instructors most of them was just basically wind tune guys but just the wanna be you know they just try to act like Bruce Lee in the movies. So instead of standing like in winching position, they just do it like this, something like this. They they just try to be a Bruce Lee. Again, uh, trying to act like Bruce Lee or impersonate him is one thing, um, but like flying in the face of things he said is another. I think it's not only my bad experience because I also can see that on YouTube how people teach. Again, with Bruce Lee constantly contradicting himself, it was hard to find a clear path. So certain things that like Ted Wong would do that Dan and Asanto would not do, and certain things that Tim Tackett would do that 
Chris Kent would not do and Jerry Petit and whoever a first generation student was, they all had their different flair on it. A big thing that Bruce wanted to protect was what Jeet Kune Do was when he was alive. That's why he didn't let Jerry Petit like teach it with his Kempo because he didn't want it to mix and get all weirded out. But what about be like your water, my friend? Because from what I can see, a lot of people try to be like Bruce Lee. They act like him, they move like him, they even make a noises like him. And he said that you should express yourself. Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. When you're trying to be somebody else, you do not express yourself, you're just acting. So be like a water, not like a cup. Because in this case, Bruce Lee is a cup. And you have to remember that even if you put water to the cup, water do not become a cup because sometimes cups look different outside than inside. So they have a walls, they have a different shapes. So even if water is in the cup, you are not the same. So you cannot be Bruce Lee. You have to find another way and be yourself. I don't know if we necessarily are contradicting Bruce by trying to imitate him, because they say imitation is the greatest form of flattery, but there are certain things that we try to move a lot like him, and we're not 100% sure that it was the most efficient way to move or fight, but, you know, it's pretty close. I think if we look at some of the actual fighters that Bruce Lee trained, Joe Lewis, Chuck Norris, things like that, Joe Lewis specifically, we can see a lot of the, that Jeet Kune Do concept actually applied and actually, like, with people fighting. Self-defense, what's your opinion about this? Because I know many people commercialize that Jeet Kune Do is the best for the streets. But to be honest, I do not believe in self-defense as a fighting style. To me, self-defense is a legal term and everything what is before a fight. Because when fight starts, then you can fight or you cannot fight. It's no shortcuts, no magic tricks that you make some wrist locks and you can run away. You can fight or you cannot fight. Yeah, self-defense is kind of a played out term. It's one of those things that any martial art could be good for self-defense if it helps you not get in a fight to begin with. Uh, Tim Tackett talks about like verbal judo where you can basically disarm an argument by being nice. <laughs> Um, you, you know, is Jeet Kune Do good for self-defense? I've made several videos on this on this subject. I think on the whole, yes, it is good for self-defense. Um, you know, depending on how it's taught and practiced, it, you know, it, I think it'll vary by the individual and the instructor. I can see on the internet that everyone's saying that Jeet Kune Do is best for self-defense and is the greatest things for the street. And what I can see on the videos and everywhere, it might be true, but if you are a bully, not a victim, because they always show that they are in the great distance, they always can do eye they always can kick the knee, they always can kick the groin or something like this. And in the real life, this guy is more ready than you. And normally you are in the fight when you already get hit in the face. You normally are not prepared. And not in all countries always is a verbal aggression before. In my country, I have seen many times that somebody throw the punch first and then they talk. <laughs> and I can see they always, always show it that somebody grab him, boom, hit in the face. They just move, boom, kick his knee. And if he, what if he just move, you know, and you just attack him? And in many countries, the guy who throw the first punch, he is the bully. He is the attacker. And they always showing that you are always ready. You are in the great distance. And in my opinion, and what, what I can see and what I experience then you are never ready for that. Something that I'm trying to focus more on is getting more of my students aware of self-defense insofar as like common outliers, overhands, you know, shady things, situational awareness. Ugh, I hate that, the term is so overused. But that's, I think Jeet Kune Do has the right frame of mind in, in going for soft spots, eye jabs, uh, throat hits, uh, kicking in the knee, things like that. But, you know, I don't think that that's ne necessarily something that should be overly relied upon. I think it should be something more, allying, more along the lines of actual fighting, like learning how to actual fight, how to actually spar, uh, stress inoculation. There's a lot of pillars of self-defense or a lot of a aspects of self-defense that I think Jikudo touches a lot of, but misses on others. So if you are generally training in martial arts where you're sparring, if you're generally training in martial arts where you're sparring and, and having full contact and sometimes, or or you know, you're having that stress inoculation like with jujitsu, then I think you're on the right path. If you want to call that Jikudo though, that's up to you. When we already talk about sparring, I'd like to know how you're running your classes. 
you spar with your students? This is like kickboxing and trying to apply Jeet Kune Do in it or how it looks like? You have the special moves in Jeet Kune Do like this. Eye jabs or kick to the knee or uh, kick to the balls or stuff like this. But you cannot really train those techniques in, in the sparring because you don't want to hurt your partner or your friend. My problem is that they believe that those techniques will stop the fight immediately, but it's not always like this. And in the sparring, you learn the most because you know how your opponent is going to react after your attack and how you're reacting when he is attacking. And if you, if you even can do your techniques because, you know, fight is different, it's more aggressive. It's completely different than training with your friend who giving you time to do your things. Uh, sparring in Jeet Kune Do is a necessity. I, I saw a quote from Burton Richardson or Amin that says, without sparring there is no Jeet Kune Do. And Bruce Lee himself liked to spar. Uh, maybe less as he got older uh, towards the end of his life due to the Hollywood thing, he didn't want to get hurt. But sparring was important. Uh, so for me and myself, like for how I train stuff uh, and how my students train, for self-defense is we practice a lot of the common like overhand rights, uh, ugly kicks, train for the untrained essentially, and then how to overpower and how to control an opponent. How to land the eye jab and the, the kicks to the knee and the groin kick, we use focus mitts for that. Um, and then we trade them when we spar, we, we go from an eye jab to a punch. So instead of a jick tech that would go straight up to the groin, you go a jick tech that would push and hit right here. And that little change can kind of help. Uh, kicks to the knee, you can actually do in sparring, you just gotta be real nice. You know, just touches like that. And we do that a lot, and, and we kick the knee in, in a nice way. You can still train this stuff. Uh, don't think just because it's so deadly that you can't do it. Uh, it's just, you have to have the right protection. Uh, if you are wanting to do eye jabs, have a motorcycle helmet, uh, or a face cage where they can't get your eyes, or safety glasses, go from there. My problem is that, you know, a lot of Jeet Kune Do people think that I just do eye jabs and fight is over and I can go home. And to me, for example, one good leg kick is worth more than one million fake eye pokes. And when I say fake eye pokes, I say that you just don't put your fingers to somebody's eyes, you just touch his forehead or something like this. And why I think like this? Because I train judo right now. I have seen many other people who come sometimes to us and they want to learn some basic sweeps, some basic floors, some takedowns, some ground fighting or stuff like this. And they are great, they have a good body control and they learn everything really quickly. But not all karate schools have mats on the floor or tatami or whatever. Sometimes they have a normal wooden floor. And because of that, they when they train bunkais and they example grab the leg and they do the take down boom sometimes they do this but they stopping the mo motion and then put somebody gently on the ground and i can see later this in their andori they fight they do example osotogai a similar move to this takedown and instead of go like boom and slam somebody the, on the ground they do like this, they grab it, boom, 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 and try to put him gently on the ground. Why? Because they have this muscle memory, they have this habit that they put somebody gently to the ground. So, from what I can see, it's really tiny chance that when you did one million times eye poke when you touch somebody's forehead, it might happen also in the fight. You fight like you train. If you never hit somebody, it's gonna be difficult for you. I do not say that I am a fighter. I am really, really far to call me a fighter. I am just a hobby. But I was competing. I break my ACL in the fight. I also have a problem with one of my eyes because of the eye poke. But this doesn't stop me. I get hurt, was painful, was sad, but I could still stand, I could still fight. So if somebody is saying that I just do IPO and fight is over, I just don't believe this guy. Once I get, you know, IPO in my eyes and it was just like, oh, okay, and then I was fighting like this, you know. And this could happen also on the street, when, and on the street they are 
more crazy than in the competition. Doesn't matter. Do you think that Jeet Kune Do is just marketing? Because to me, it looks a lot like this. A lot of people like to say Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee, martial art as a commercial for the club. And this sounds really cool. I think Jeet Kune Do is good marketing for the internet and bad marketing for the people local. Here's why. In Jeet Kune Do, it's got such a big name and that big name attached to it is Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee is very popular on the internet. But it's been 50 years almost since he passed and time is not kind to anyone. So, you know, with Bruce Lee having been dead for almost 50 years, not even a whole lot of people know them. Like, I would say probably 95% of my kids program have no idea who Bruce Lee is. There's even a picture up of him, you know, all over this place and they still wouldn't have an idea. And that is a, uh, that's an odd thing, yeah? The way I think it's better advertised locally is just self-defense. You just call it self-defense or you call it advanced striking or you call it, you know, whatever you want to call it, but you teach them Jeet Kune Do without telling them you're teaching them Jeet Kune Do, which is kind of what I do with Jiu Jitsu and my Muay Thai program. My Muay Thai program is just a striking program. We have boxing, we have Muay Thai, we have Savat, we have the Jun Fan uh, kickboxing, we have Wing Chun aspects. Uh, we have all that and we spar it and try and hit each other with it and it makes it super fun. Jiu Jitsu is kind of a hybrid as well. We have a lot of our, of course, base Brazilian Jiu Jitsu from Carlos Machado. We have catch wrestling from Eric Paulson. We have Shuto from Ron Balicki. And we have a lot of Nogi grappling from Eli Knight. So we have a big hodgepodge of grappling that we just teach as grappling. And we call it Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because it's marketable in the area. But if I spent a ton of money onto marketing in my area in Jeet Kune Do, I would have no students, like on the whole, because it's just not good marketing locally. But worldwide, yeah, it still has some, uh, it has some oomph. So I wouldn't say it's great marketing locally, but it is great marketing on the internet. So, slowly I have nothing more to say. And I know I could make some people a little bit angry, but it wasn't my intention. This was just my opinion and you don't have to agree with me. So, I'd like to say big thank you for Ed from Etoyana Martial Arts. Thanks so much for having me on the channel, Damien. I really appreciate it. And you should go and subscribe to his channel, Metroyana Martial Arts. But I hope you subscribe to Damien's as well. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Do whatever you can to help his channel grow because he's a great guy, he has cool content, so go and check him out. Also, xmarshall.com, you can get yourself awesome shirts like this. Use the code Metroliner22. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Party on. Thank you for watching. See you next time.